The debate of nature versus nurture is one that has continually perplexed scientists, parents, and students alike. Conflicting views over our innate abilities compared to those that we acquire and learn from our environment has fueled many debates in development. The question of nature versus nurture holds additional relevance in the world of motor development where individuals are born with 99% of the same genetic material but still acquire and express motor skills with varying levels of competence. These are great questions, and they barely skim the surface of the highly dense and potentially heated nature versus nurture debate. Since motor development is not limited to one domain, but rather visible in different environments and stages of life, it is vital to explore the nature versus nurture debate from numerous areas. In motor development, the question of interest is whether our motor behavior is a product of motor skill developed by practicing over and over again or a result of our motor ability, which is genetically determined. But to answer this question, we first need to differentiate the concept of motor skills and motor ability. Motor skills are defined as activities or tasks that require voluntary movement to achieve a specific goal, and this is the nurture perspective. Differently, ability is a stable trait or capacity of the individual that is a determinant of a person's potential to perform specific skills. Abilities are generally thought to be genetically determined and by large unmodified by experience, and this is the nature perspective. But what makes us different with respect to our motor behavior? But when we look at the results, we should verify if all neonates were capable or not of imitating facial expressions without previous learning opportunities. And the answer is not all of them. The average of 18 of 40 neonates always imitated. The average of 17.5 of 40 sometimes imitated. And the average of 4.5 of 40 never imitated. Yes, it was demonstrated that this behavior can be observed frequently in extremely young humans. It could be interpreted to mean that facial imitation, a very complex behavior, has innate elements. How else would these results have been found? Miro McGraw also developed another wonderful study in 1939. In this classical experiment, McGraw compared the appearance of motor milestones in twins. Both of them were in the same environment in the daycare. One was trained. Johnny learned roller skating, swimming, problem solving, climbing, and other activities. Another one, Jimmy, was untrained. He spent the whole time with nurses in the daycare and received similar attention but not special active training.
McGraw findings were very interesting. She found that Jimmy and Johnny achieved the motor milestones at the same age. However, the quality of the movements were dramatically different. If you look at this movie, you see how different the movements were. It makes you wonder, is this nature or nurture? Considering the possibility of both nature and nurture, Super and colleagues studied child rearing practices in Kenya. Super investigated if children from the same tribe were raised with different cultural practices would achieve their motor milestones at the same age. So he studied children from both Kenyan villages in urban and rural environments and children in Western cultures. They hypothesized that in nature, Kenyan's genetic heritage should predominate and there will be no differences between the rural and urban environments. If nurture, environment will predominate, and there will be no differences between the urban Kenyans and the Western children. Let's look into the results. Rural infants sat, stood, and walked four to six weeks sooner than their Western counterparts. Urban infants sat, stood, and walked two to three weeks sooner than their Western counterparts, but behind the rural Kenyan workers. So, what is it? Nature or nurture? Well, Kristen, we may be asking the question the wrong way. It may be not just nature or nurture. It's the interaction between them. 